Hi, good evening everybody. Welcome to Franchise Reborn. We have a lot of news to talk about, so I'm going to get right into it, guys. And I'm going to try to uh, keep this video at a reasonable distance because there's a lot to talk about here. So I'm going to open up, guys, with the contracts. We're going to talk about the contracts. We had one on the big team and one on the Amherst. Uh, Gergensen's gets one year at two and a half million. And Rusik gets a two-year deal at 775k a year. Okay, so 775k. Uh, it's minimum. It's fine. Uh, I think the Rusik deal is a good one. I think we have to keep him in our system because he can be a trade piece eventually. I don't see Rusik being part of our future. I just don't on the Sabres. Nothing against him or anything. I just think we're so loaded up front, guys. I just do. I think we're so loaded up front. The Gergensen's deal. To be honest, I'm kind of more for that deal than I was the Ocposo, to be honest, because Gergensen's, if anything, looked like he's adapting to the speed game, even in his late 20s. You know, he, 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 had, he had good legs last year. He was moving, whereas Ocposo looked like a lot slower. But uh, hey, I mean, uh, my concern is this. I want to jump on this while I remember. This is the, the weird thing, but it does prove something also. All right, so we'll talk about it. The, right now, the Sabres have 22 out of 23 roster spots filled right now. So for those of you screaming that you want to get like Kulik on the team and potentially like uh, an Isaac Rosen, which I don't think will happen yet, or a Matt Savoy, which could happen, but I think Kulik's pretty much the safe bet uh, of somebody coming up this year. We have to be questioning what's going on. Well, guys, I think we're going to be doing some trades. I'll just say it. I think we're going to move out like three or four of these names uh, right off the top. Um, Olofsson, right off the top, comes to... Uh, comes to uh, I know they're trying to get Jose re-signed. Hinnestros, I think they're going to let him go. And uh, Kyle Clegg, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, I should say, sorry, Kale Clegg, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with him. I think Clegg's the odd guy out, guys, to be honest. I just do. Um, you know, they got seven defensemen locked in. We're trying to get another one. We'll have to figure that out. And as for goaltending, I think they're going to move uh, Comrie somehow, some way, and possibly UPL as well. I just do. So uh, Bryson, I think, is going to move out. Yoki Haru, very strong possibility. We're going to move him too, guys. So there's about three, four, five guys that we have locked in that we could move in the offseason is what I'm saying. All right, let's get back to the video. I've yacked enough about that, guys. So uh, the Gergensen signing, ah, look, it's one year. You know, it's one year. And late in the year, you know, we might give these guys a chance to go win a Stanley Cup somewhere, depending how the season's going, too. you got to remember that as well. So we'll see, you know. It never hurts to have somebody that there's some an NHL potential left in them under contract because you can always move them out anyway. So, um, and Rusik, I think uh, it, we had to get him locked in as a movable piece in a deal. I think they're going to probably move Rusik maybe with UPL and something in some sort of deal eventually, because Rusik uh, could play in the NHL, I think, eventually. All right, next one, guys. The bad news of the day for me, Mike Pekka signs as an assistant coach with the New York Rangers and Peter Laviolette. I mean, this will, you know, will Drew, we just stop trying to like take from us? <laughs> like, honestly, um, this one ticks me off. I, I hate to see I hate to lose Mike Pekka, guys. I do. I hate to lose him in our organization. The guy's a winner. He's a saber through and through in his heart, this guy. But can we really stop him from, you know what I mean, going and, and coaching in the NHL? This guy one day might be a head coach in the NHL. So I think Mike Pekka, we got to just wish him well, thank him for his time that he brought over in the few years that he was there in uh, Rochester, he really did wonders, it seemed like. I mean, a team all of a sudden was a competitive playoff team, which I wasn't used to seeing, you know? And, you know, we have to let, let him, like, find his way in his career now, his coaching career. So I, I just, you know, I always envisioned that Mike Pekka was going to stay with the Sabres. That's, that's the thing. Maybe that was my bad. I was really surprised to see that he's, that he's with the Rangers. I was like... Yeah, you know, that kind of sucks. 
But guys, it is what it is. I wish him well. I do wish Mike Pekka well. And I'll tell you what, I got a gut feeling he's going to work his way back to our organization years down the line. Just call it a gut feeling. You know, just right now, he, you know, this is a promotion for him. I, he's got to go for it. I think we should have brought him up as an assistant. Anyway, moving on. Okay, guys, I want to talk about, um, should I talk about this first? Because there's a few things I want to talk about. Yes. Uh, I'll talk about this first. Uh, no, no, we're going to go in the order of the thumbnail, right? Yeah, we'll go in the order of the thumbnail. Uh, thoughts on Darlene and power extensions, okay? I want to talk about this too. See, there's no point making two videos for this. I can get it all into one. Um, Darlene and power. Oh, goodness. You know, we've talked about this before, guys, over and over. We'll start with power. Let's go with power. I think we're going to get him locked in right around the same thing. I think it'll be like seven years... Will he, will he command as much, he could command as much money as uh, seven million a year. He could get it. So how would you guys be with that seven times seven? You know, or maybe seven times 7.1, give him the $50 million thing, um, you know, like, um, like the other two got. So I don't know, guys, what do you think? You know, is he deserving of making what Cousins and, and Tage are making? You know, I think so. I think so. Look, the, he, he, he's, he's just starting to scratch what he's going to become, and he's already playing well over 20 minutes a night. Sometimes he's leading us in minutes most nights, most games. You know, he's steady. He's, um, uh, there's so much good to his game. And look, he is up for the Calder. Will he get it? Probably not. But at the same time, it's something to talk about. Seven times, let's just say seven times seven, guys. What do you think of that number? If we were to lock in Owen Power, because I really think the hell with the bridge deals, okay? They can backfire. <laughs> we, we give this guy, let's say, uh, two years at five million, and then all of a sudden he's a complete monster in two years. What are we looking at? We're looking at more than seven, right? So I think what we should do is lock him in now, lock him in long term. I believe Owen Power is part of our Stanley Cup solution. Get him locked in. The big, big defenseman. Along the way, he's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. We all know it. He's just going to get better and better and better. So I say lock him in seven years times seven. What do you guys think of that number? Now, Rasmus Dahlin. This is where the bridge contract comes back to haunt you <laughs> right now, okay? Uh, I think we probably could have got Dahlin locked in at $8 million when we locked when we did that, that uh, bridge deal. But, you know, there is something to be said for, like, bridge deals. We had to know. You know, you can't just lock somebody in and, and take a chance. And then all of a sudden, you're in a mess. So, you know, we don't want that. So, Darlene, I know the rumors going out all over the place, eight years times 10 million a year. I, I do get that. My friend, like, sent me, a, uh, he's cracking up. And I said, you guys just locked in Caulfield for eight. You're laughing at us locking in Darlene for 10. Are you kidding me? Like if we did, we, you know, it was much better contract. It's way more proven. But at the same time, it's like, it hurts a lot. <laughs> you know, 10 million bucks is, is something that like, I, I'm a real cap guy and I want to see this cap stay. I want to see as much space stay open as long as possible so that when we are making possibly a deep run. We have about 8 million bucks open. We have options, you know, we have options. So got to remember guys, Darlene's already eating up 6 million of the cap right now. Last year, Ocposo ate up 6 million of the cap. You take this year, you give Darlene 10 while well, he's not, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying 10. Okay. I'm, it's not for sure. You know, he might, uh, might be 10 and a half. It might not be. I don't know. I don't want to say it, but look, he's, he's locked in for one year at six. We know that. So we got him at six this year. This year is not a cap crunch year anyway. We're going to have cap space no matter what we do. But let's say you lock him in at 10, okay? And you got a pulso off the books now at six. We save three and a half there. And then we have to add another four over there. You get it? We're just kind of transferring money from a pulso over to Darlene is all we're really doing in the cap crunch. Where the cap does hurt, where it does hurt us, is power going from like 1 million a year, 916, say a million, going from 1 million to 7. 
You know, you got to justify that six million inside of inside of the numbers here, and you can't. <laughs> you can't anymore. You can't do that anymore because Akpulse is off the books. That's the last bad contract off the books. And now there's no more. There's Skinner, and Skinner has another four years left on that eight-year deal. So um, we got to figure it out, guys. We just do. But um, we do have the cap space because Adams has been a real cap genius with the money. He's been smart with the money. And uh, no complaints there at all whatsoever. I think Darlene, guys, yeah, I think we're in the neighborhood of 10 million. I, I don't think these rumors are wrong. I think we're looking at 10 million bucks for Darlene. I just do. If he takes under 10 million, it's because he chose to. I, that's just what I believe. Anything under 10 million is great work by Adams because Darlene now, you can feel, is coming into his own. He just is, guys. He is. And we better lock him now because if we even wait till next year, we don't want to wait till next year. Get him locked in now because now is the time where he's earned the big bucks. Now is the time. So that's where I stand with that. I do think 10 and 7. Uh, let's say 7-year let's say seven year contract. Seems to be the thing with the boys, eh? The 7-year deal. So let's say Darlene gets locked in for 70 million bucks for 7 years. And no one power gets 49 million for seven years. What do you guys think of that? 17 million. It's a lot. But guys, two number one overall picks on our blue line, you know, and they're beasts. Let's face it. We got to look at it that way too. So you're going to pay for talent. Okay. Closing up the video. I got uh, blue liners. Adams is targeting, uh, you know, uh, Brett Pesci, Noah Hannafin. Look, I mean, they're 28, 26. One's right side defenseman, left side. I don't care about the right, left thing. I just don't care. I'm not one of those guys that I believe in that conspiracy theory. You have to have a right-handed defenseman on the right side. I don't buy into it. I never will. So you can show me any statistic you want. I don't buy into it. I never will. But I, 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 making sense is what I'll buy into. Does it make sense to get a right, a, a, a right shot defenseman? Yes, it does. It does because... You know, I think we're going to move out eventually in Yoki Haru. I just do. I think we're going to move Yoki Haru eventually. But, you know, he's, these are just guys he's targeting. Remember, I, I don't think we're going to sign either of these guys. They're going to command too much money is what I feel. And they each have one year left in their deals, right? So, no, I, I, I don't want to go that route. I think we got to go. We got to, you know, if we, if we do get Hannafin, it has to be with him signing an extension, a reasonable extension. He can't come in here and start like making eight and a half or something. And Owen Power's making seven. That wouldn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Just wouldn't. And the truth is, guys, we need to keep cap space open. We can't just invest everything, you know, and uh, in our blue line, because then we're going to start looking like the Toronto Maple Leafs, what they did with their four forwards. We're going to resemble that with our blue liners. And then when we need money up front, we might not have it when we really desperately need it, you know, on a rainy day. So we got to keep some money open. Guys, I'm a big believer you keep 10% of your cap open all the time, okay, till late in the season. I haven't said that before really on a channel, but we've never really had to because we either had no money or we've had too much. But I'm telling you right now, as we start taking baby steps into spending the money again properly, I think we really should keep about 8 million bucks open till we see where the calorie, sorry, the salary cap goes to, guys. We can't mess around with that. We just cannot mess around with, we, we, we just can't mess around when it comes to the money, okay? We got to keep a chunk open at all times, okay? There, it's important because, and I hate to say this, but what if we have another pandemic? What if something happens? Government decides, okay, we're locking it down again. Cap is frozen again. And here we go again where there's a, it's a dead cap era for like three, four years or something. Then what happens? Besides that life will suck again if that happens. Besides that, I'm talking just in the hockey world. That means we need to keep the cap space open, guys. We need the what ifs. Everybody's saying, oh, well, the cap's going to rise in five years. We don't know if there's going to be a nuclear war in five years. I don't like to bank on something I don't know about, you know? I've heard that rumor before and then we had a pandemic. No, no. I think what we have to do is just keep cap space open for the in-case syndrome eventually 
it, it, something can happen. Something can just happen. We make a trade. We have to bring somebody, we have to take pieces in. That's 5 million bucks more. We know it puts us over the top, but we have the cap space to do it. We need flexibility. 10% is what I'm saying. Just keep about 8 million bucks open. I'm good. I'm not talking like 18 or 16 or 50. Keep eight, keep eight open all the time. But at first, get our, get our guy signed, get Darlene, get power signed, and then we'll look at the money then. And uh, next year, if we get those two signed, we have half our team signed, all of our core signed, and then we can really look at where we going next. Because, you know, I was looking at the names that we'd have signed for next year if we get these two locked in this summer. And it's an impressive list who is locked in for next year if we get these two locked in. So, all right, guys, done. I've yacked enough. I want to get on uh, perhaps another video, perhaps not. If I don't see you tonight, I'll see you tomorrow. Till then.